BMWS 1000XR review when I rented the BMWS 1000XR for a six-day trip riding the Dolomites in northern Italy with my two amigos. I had no idea when I signed the rental agreement and threw a lamp over the big bike for the first time that I'd be so enamored with the bike. Five days after landing back in Los Angeles, I beelined it over to I bought a Super BMW and bought one. But wait. Maybe I just wasted the nice chunks of change because of context rather than reality. Maybe I'd be in fault riding anything onto wheels in the mountains of Italy and the BMWS 1000XR was going to feel mediocre on familiar roads. Nope. That didn't happen. If you've read any of my articles for Ultimate Motorcycling, you know I'm not a journalist. I'm just a guy who is fortunate to have a friend who lets me write for his magazine, loves to write, has invested copious amounts of money and time on training slash coaching, and spent his seat time primarily in the canyons, on multi-day tours, and at the track. My opinions and perspective are specific to my riding preferences and not one of a trained, seasoned, technically proficient journalist. Okay, disclaimer done. I am also the proud owner of a 2015 Ducati Multistrada 1200S and a 2016 Suzuki GSX-S1000 which I reviewed for this website. However, upon purchasing a 2016 BMW S1000XR, it was the Suzuki I sold to my very good friend Dennis at Beach Moto, and not the Multistrada. At this point maybe you're asking, why would you buy two bikes that are basically in the same sport touring category? As you'll read, the XR was to become my new Anil naked bike for the track and canyons. That my 600 mile service, I decided to clean up the XR a bit. The facelift was cosmetic in nature, as the guts of the bike need no help from me or any aftermarket manufacturer in my humble opinion. The BMW S1000 XR hauls the mail directly out of the crate. However, if I'm going to take it to the track I certainly did not need a top case rack, side case mounts turing screen, hand guards, or passenger pegs. Thanks to RNG Racing, Evo, Performance, and Poog, I streamlined things. When I chose to rent the XR in Italy, I thought that the Multistrada was a competitor, and they very well may be if you ask the marketing departments of both Ducati and BMW, as well as the thousands of buyers of both bikes around the world. After riding and now owning both, I decided to take the road less traveled with the XRC what I did there. I felt the BMW S1000 XR would fit in nicely with my buddies who ride a Priya 2 Onos, Kimaho FD10S, and KDM 1290 Super Dukes, even if they did not think so. So here's my take today's bikes, tires, electronics, chassis, engines, and overall performance capabilities are improving at warped speed. I'd argue almost any bike in the naked flash sport flash sport touring segments are going to be more bike than 99.9% .9 of all rider skills mine included when riding on challenging roads and slash or the track. Unless you're racing or 21 years old, for both, you really don't need a sport bike to enjoy the track at pace, or a safe but fast ride in the canyons. Most of my buddies, some former racers, current racers, and just everyday riders are beginning the migration away from sport bikes and towards the amazing naked class of bikes that forgive our age and waistline, yet don't compromise on performance and outright fun. I say give your lower back and body a break and get a comfortable motorcycle with sport bike DNA. Not for me, that bike was the XR. It's all day comfortable, has a full suite of 21st century electronics, a screaming S1000 R engine, monster Rambo brakes, and a vehicle inducing clutchless up and down shifter. Part of me thinks I bought a bike just for the shifter. Kidding weight, am I? Almost all of the rider coaches I've had the pleasure of working with over the past six years since I moved to Southern California from New York have taught me while riding street bikes such as the Maho FC1, the Maho FC10, Triumph Speed Triple, and Honda CB1000 are to name a few. For any of you who think you can't go well on track unless you have a full race spec sport bike with slicks and tire warmers, I invite you to head on over to YouTube and check out instructors and former racers Ken Hill, Nick Ionetich, Lee Parks, Chris Paris, Jason Friedmore, Michael Gilbert and others flying around the racetrack on basically bone stock street bikes with street tires. So now maybe you're saying, but, hey, you could have done all that with the multi-strong too and it would have been just as capable. 
Here is where I think the line in the sand between the BMW and the Ducati is drawn. These are far different motorcycles at the track or in the canyons at pace. Drilling down a bit further, I'd say the gap in DNA widens at the track versus canyons. So, while I'll probably split time in the canyons on both bikes, the BMW will be my track option. Underneath all those luggage tracks, and behind the fancy OEM integrated GPS mount, lives the beast that is the BMW S1000 XO. While the Ducati Multistrada 1200S is no slouch of a bike in terms of power and handling, the XR is at another level of outright performance. IBE now beaten both the BMW S1000 XR and the Ducati Multistrada 1200S at a few track days, on some long tours, and countless day trips full of twisty roads. My Suzuki GSX S1000 has given way to the S1000 XR. I'm keeping the Multistrada and the BMW. I love both bikes but for different reasons. I think BMW got the marketing a bit wrong. The XR is not an adventure bike. It's, well, I don't actually know what it is categorically. What I do know is it's a fantastic, refined, comfortable, and fast motorcycle. It's way more super naked than sport tour and that's why I customized it in the way I defend FE10 on performance enhancing substances. The Ducati Multistrada 1200S is classic sport touring, and when I have a long trip I'll grab the key fog with the Italian logo without hesitation. When heading to the track, it'll be the German visible for three disguise and redone pride in my garage. BMW.